All right, everyone, it's time to talk about the Kursk Strait in Crimea. There was a bridge bombing there. There is security footage of the actual bombing itself. It appears to be a truck that exploded. And the Russians came out and said, well, it looks like it was a cistern drainage truck or something like that. And it blew up. Um, the problem is, uh, if you look at the size of the explosion and the resulting aftermath, the truck clearly was packed to the brim with explosives. I think you probably would need an actual truck full of explosives to do that kind of damage. The blast was enormous. Um, we leveled part of the bridge, taking it completely out of commission. Why does this matter? Of course, <clears throat> this is a war zone. Crimea is uh, officially part of Russia. Even the West has tacitly admitted that at this point. Why is it important? Putin has said that an attack in Crimea is effectively the same as an attack on Moscow. Looks like a prelude to bigger things. I'm not talking about nuclear war, although, you know, it is on the table. It's just a remote chance. I am talking about it being tied into what I appear, what I believe is that there's a rope-a-dope strategy going on right now. The Russians have put forth the conscripts, the troops most likely to flee, least likely to fight effectively with the shittiest equipment. They've shipped them to the front. I have a feeling that they went through people and, and they're mainly sending people who are dissidents against the Russian regime and have been planning this for some months anyway. They, they have the intel on all of their citizens. It's possible for them to do that. So they send tens of thousands of fairly poorly equipped and trained men into Ukraine. The Ukrainians, of course, tend to win uh, those engagements. I mean, if they don't, Putin's happy because they take land. If they do win, it doesn't matter to Putin. And I think I know why. If I look at Putin's strategy, what he's doing strategically so far, I have a feeling that he's luring the Ukrainians in to marching as many troops into their land. Of course, it's contested now because Moscow has officially annexed it, although no other major country acknowledges the annexation. Most of them abstain. The entire Western world repudiates it and says, and, and they're not wrong on this, that it's against international law. Let the Ukrainian troops march in rally, gather together, and then bomb them with thermobaric weapons. That's what I think is going on here. Send your weakest troops in, they will cede ground, the Ukrainians march into your territory, and then you make a statement on TV saying, well, they've invaded us, you know, and they're attacking fucking infrastructure in Crimea, they're engaging in war crimes. You know, NATO won't recognize this as a fact, but Russia and its sphere will. And then they bomb the shit out of them. They say, well, we're no longer going to hold back. Fuck you. NATO can fuck itself. You're already involved in the fight. You're already arming and funding our enemy. Our enemy is on our land. We have a justification. We can do whatever the hell we want. War crimes, civilian casualties. Putin will be able to go on TV because of the mistakes that the United States has made in numerous engagements over the last 20 fucking years and say, look, the U.S. didn't care when there were a half million civilian casualties in Iraq. Why should we care if we conduct uh, operations and there are civilian casualties? These bitches are just ass backwards. They're propagandists. They just hate Russia. He will use all of these lines, and he'll only be half wrong when he makes them. The United States, by and large, and some of its NATO ally members, have really painted themselves into a fucking corner. The problem is that the United States has conducted operations of a similar type for so long that Putin has limitless propaganda potential. And there are people in the West, uh, Russians won't be taken in maybe, but people in the West will. I love uh, how you've got the, uh, the stereotype of like the Vatnik, so like the, uh, the passive absorber of uh, Russian propaganda from the government. They have, you know, various memes regarding this. You have the same thing in the West now, don't you? You, you have a bunch of people that don't know anything about Ukraine, don't know where it is on a map, flying the Ukrainian flag on Twitter right now and talking about how World War III would be a funny thing. Yeah, fucking kill all the Ruskies, bomb Moscow. Isn't it the same fucking shit? It's the same propaganda. The same end result, if these people were actually, if they got their way, there'd be a nuclear war. I think that there's a rope-a-dope strategy going on right now, and the Ukrainians should be very goddamn cautious about how they deploy their troops when they march into these regions, because Russia no longer recognizes it as a sovereign entity, to be clear. And they'd love to go further. They already fainted, uh, the Ukrainians, by attacking the north and then withdrawing to distract their troops while they invaded the areas they actually intended to annex in the first place. As far as the Kursk Strait bombing, um, this could be a false flag, that is, that Russia's seeking to gain justification for attacking Ukrainians further. 
And so they bomb their own bridge and they say, well, we warned you that it would be taken as an attack on all of Mother Russia if something happened in Crimea because we annexed Crimea years ago. It's ours. You attacked our territorial integrity. Now we're going to let loose all hell on you. That's possible. The problem is that because of the fog of war, it could actually be a Ukrainian sabotage attempt, and you wouldn't know the difference. You don't know, I don't know, the intelligence officials won't know, experts in the field won't know, military generals won't know. At the end of the day, only the directly responsible parties are likely to know. And if a government does uh, have awareness that its own participation led to the attack, they're not going to let on. Russia's not going to say, oh yeah, by the way, in full admission, we false flagged our own bridge in Crimea, killing a bunch of civilians <laughs> that fly under our own flag. Yeah, Putin's going to admit to that. Yeah, the Ukrainians will admit to it. Yeah, we blew up the uh, bridge in Crimea that Putin said could cause uh, Armageddon to occur. By the way, fellow Americans, you realize that the President of the United States is uh, calling uh, the current situation over there basically uh, on the brink of Armageddon. Quite literally, is it's his own term. We're close to Armageddon. It's as bad as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Dude, uh, you do not want to draw a comparison with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Number one, apples to oranges, which is the good part, unfortunately. Number two, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis almost did lead to a nuclear war. We came very, very close to ending the world of man as we know it. A Russian sub-commander was the one that stopped that. Now, just to be clear, it was the Soviets that showed more restraint than the United States in that particular maneuvering that was going on. A sub with a nuclear torpedo on it that would have bullseyed a shit ton of U.S. naval vessels was being hit with dummy depth charges and they lost contact with Russia because they had to submerge. They figured that the war had already happened because they lost communication. They thought the nukes had already fallen. And so they said, well, under our current protocol, we're supposed to press this little red button and nuke this ship that keeps harassing us. We're supposed to get rid of them. And one of the three individuals that were making that call said no and said, well, well fucking let's go to the surface and see if we can pick up the, the signal because I'm not convinced that Moscow has been wiped off the map. A Soviet. A commie, well, was the one with more restraint. The, the U.S. Navy at the time, think about it. You've got a nuclear-capable sub underneath you and you're dropping depth charges knowing full well that they don't know that they're necessarily dummy charges. That was a really great idea. I hope that the person commanding that particular vessel got demoted, by the way. Hopefully they ended up swabbing the poop deck for the rest of their career for almost killing 100 million or so people. Uh, you don't know who did the bombing. But we, let's look at what we do know. The bridge was bombed, catastrophically damaged. Part of it collapsed right into the strait. So that's number one. We know that Putin has come out and said that an attack on Crimea will be taken as an act of war against Russia proper. So not contested territory. This is Crimea. They annexed this years ago because of Obama's weakness. Because of Biden's weakness, they're doing what they're doing right now. We now have to wait and see what their response will be. I suspect that it will be luring the Ukrainians into their own territory deeper and deeper and then knocking the shit out of them with all of the weapons that they're drawing up on the border but conspicuously not using. I don't think it'll be tactical nukes, although I could be wrong. If I am wrong, of course, then we've got bigger problems because it probably leads to nuclear annihilation, just to be clear. Where's the fucking hippie movement? Why are you liberals not saying, hey, let's, uh, you know, let's hold, have a love circle instead of doing this shit? Why don't you drop some acid? Why don't you go back to being like 1969 liberals or something like that? At least you had cool music. Now you're the ones that want everyone to fry in nuclear hellfire. Well, well, I like Fallout. Uh, no, thanks. I think I'll pass on that one. That's about all. Peace out.